Oh no, your string is sharp. What do you do? I tune down. Never tune down. What? You know how they say you need to tune up? That's because you should always be tuning up. If your string is sharp, you bring it down further than you need to, then you always bring it up to pitch. If you tune directly down without coming back up at least a little bit, it's much less stable and you're gonna deal with tuning issues. One of the most dangerous things that you can do as a guitarist is something that gets recommended far too often. Never ever break off the grounding pin on your amp's power cord. Why would anybody do this, you ask? Well, I've had sound guys, salesmen, amp repair techs, people who should know better all tell me, if you're dealing with hum or unwanted noise in your signal chain, just break off your amp's ground pin. Definitely don't do this. See, what this does is if your amp malfunctions and it needs to to displace a large amount of power. It sends that electricity down here somewhere safe. But if this thing is broken off, then it sends that electricity through your cable, through your guitar, through you, and uh, yeah, that's very, very much a bad thing. If you're dealing with hum, you wanna eliminate the problem at the source or buy a product that eliminates the ground loop in a safe way. Don't take it out on your poor power cables. Your tone should be to die for, not something that you die for. Never be that guy. Hey guys, I brought my acoustic. I can't wait to show everybody the nine minute prog song I just wrote. <laughs> and I get it, everybody wants to bring their guitar to a gathering and wow the party with their music, but it's all too easy to become that guy. Here are some tips to avoid that. First of all, read the room. If people are asking you to play, that is a great sign. If no one is, don't just sonically force yourself on people. You gotta have a good handful of crowd pleasers you can pull out, and then I guess maybe if you need to, sprinkle some of your prog in there or whatever. But I'm talking your wagon wheels, your sweet home Alabamas, I hate to say it, your wonder walls. Get other people involved, make it a communal thing, pass your guitar to someone else, get someone to sing along with you, play songs that everyone can sing along to. Remember, this is not your concert, this is Trevor's house party. Playing guitar to gathering can be great, but be aware of your surroundings, and please don't be that guy. Now say you're at a party and you get handed an acoustic guitar to strum. What do you play? I don't know, G, E minor, C, D? Well you could, but that's what the last five guys played. What if you changed up those chords so they sound like this? And here's the thing, it's simple to play that kind of stuff and it sounds great. I cover those chords and more in my new course, Elevated Open Chords. In this course, we look at a number of easy to implement concepts that will get you playing some beautiful chords that most guitar players have no idea even exist. Electric or acoustic, I use this stuff all the time to spice up basic chord progressions. For a little bit longer, we've got special launch pricing. You can get this course 50% off if you use promo code LAUNCH50 at checkout. I've got links for that in the description or you can find more information at samuraiguitar3.com. So you wanna get rid of the worst guitar that you've ever owned. When the last things that you want to do in this situation is straight up sell it to the guitar store. Of course, not every store has the same policy, but every store does need to make a profit off of buying the guitar from you. When I used to work at a guitar store, if somebody came in just straight up looking to sell an instrument, we would give them 60% of what we would sell it for. You'd be far better off trying to sell online and be willing to take 30% less than what you list it for. The last option should be selling to someone who then is going to sell it again. One of the great things about the day and age we live in is that you can get some great sounds running your guitar into your computer and then listening back through headphones. But I strongly recommend against always playing and practicing like this. I don't know what it is, but there's something about loud physical sounds that we react differently to. And when you're playing a gig or jamming with a band, you're gonna be making loud guitar noises. If you're not used to this, it can be intimidating. Trepidation sneaks into your playing, which is never good. And next thing you know, you're getting stuff thrown at you at your first gig. Every now and then, you're gonna to wanna to get some actual speakers moving, crank it up and let loose. <laughs> When playing guitar, never tense up. Easy as that, right? Well, it would be if tightening your muscles wasn't a natural reaction to a stressful situation, like playing a difficult piece of music. When playing something fast or difficult, you wanna be as smooth and relaxed as when you're playing something easy, which is hard because it goes against our natural instincts. The best thing you can do is just try to be aware of when you're doing this and when you catch yourself, take a breath, loosen up. Never do sound check without earplugs, even if you're not planning on wearing them for the gig. Now, of course, you should wear them for a gig. Your ears are important, it's easy to damage them, and if you do, it's permanent. But I know that you're just not gonna convince some musicians to wear hearing protection, so I would implore you, if nothing else, wear them during the sound check, here's why. In my experience, sound check is the most likely place where you're gonna come across a dangerous, surprising, obnoxiously loud sound. You're tweaking your pedals and the drummer smashes a cymbal right beside your ear, probably gonna happen during sound check. Some horrible feedback coming from the PA, probably gonna happen during sound check. The other guitar player turning on his amp without realizing how loud it is and smacking a chord, 
probably gonna happen during sound check. These are especially dangerous, especially when you're not expecting them. So yeah, you should wear your earplugs for the entire gig, but if you're not going to, at least wear them during sound check. Never use compressed air to clean your guitar. The air can come out really cold, which can crack your finish, and can also just lodge dust significantly deeper. Instead, a good microfiber cloth is the way to go. Never go on tour without Apple AirTags or some sort of Android equivalent. At some point on tour, you're gonna be away from your precious instruments, and I've heard so many painful stories of bands getting their trailers broken into and their instruments stolen. These little guys are tracking devices that give you a means to find a lost piece of gear. And I personally tuck mine somewhere less obvious as thieves are becoming aware of this kind of thing. These solid connectors are quite bad for your pedals and you shouldn't use them. I got two pedals connected by one of these and look what happens when I press one of them. The other one lifts up slightly. When these are both secured to a pedal board, if I press on one of these, that pressure is gonna happen right here and eventually this jack is gonna break. A short cable with some elasticity in it solves the problem. Never run your tube amp if it's not plugged into a speaker. These things generate a lot of energy and if there's nowhere for that power to go, it can be quite damaging and a rather expensive fix. Never be a jealous hater. Jealousy is a natural thing that many of us deal with. At some point, you're gonna see someone who has success that you want, a piece of gear you want, skills you want, but taking that jealousy and trying to bring somebody else down to your level with it is never a good look. Whenever this creeps up within me, I tell myself that you can't always control what you feel, but you can control what you do with it. Instead of letting it leak into the world in a negative way, I'll take this ugly feeling and turn it into something positive, like motivation or inspiration, and doing so has such a better outcome for all parties involved. Here's a dramatic recreation of something you should never do. Burr, sure it's cold outside. Maybe I shouldn't have left my guitar in the trunk all day. So you don't want your guitar to go abruptly from one climate to another. This can cause your finish to crack, issues with the wood, that kind of thing. But the nice thing is your case kind of acts as a stabilizer. It'll retain the temperature and humidity of wherever your guitar was for quite a while. So if your guitar was out in the cold all day, don't open the case right away. Let it sit for an extended period of time to climatize. Now on the subject of keeping your guitars, especially your acoustics, in a happy climate, never leave the humidity of your guitar up to mother nature unless maybe you live in the tropics. Where I live, we have very dry winters, very humid summers, so in my studio, I've got a dehumidifier and a humidifier to try to keep things somewhat even. It's not perfect though, and I like to be especially cautious with my acoustics, so in each of their cases, I use one of these Daddario Humidity Packs. Can be more straightforward, one pouch goes by the headstock, and then the doubler goes in the sound hole, and this maintains a perfect balance. I've got links for these in the description. The most common physical ailment I'll deal with as a guitar player is fingernail pain. You bend a string, which can cause your finger and the nail to kind of separate. It's extremely painful, it makes playing guitar miserable, but here's what you have to do to never deal with this. First of all, I'll file instead of clip the fingernails on the fingers I use for bending. I don't know why, but this seems to be a decent preventative measure. However, every now and then, the old finger fingernail separation does still happen. And why this hurts so much when you're playing is because your finger is kind of always pulling at that tiny little wound. So what I do is I use crazy glue to glue my finger back to the nail and it seems to solve this problem entirely. This one comes from a whole lot of personal experience, but as a guitar player, you should never tell yourself I will be happy if only, and for me this presented itself in a number of different ways. I'll be happy if only I can play like this, or if only I can buy that guitar, if only I can have a career in music, if only I can hit a certain number of YouTube subscribers. And wouldn't it be so nice if it worked like that? But for better or worse, humans are really good at adapting to their scenarios. You hit one milestone, you buy one thing, that becomes normal, and you want something else. And as I found myself going through this cycle over and over again, the biggest thing that I try to remind myself is to find as much joy as possible in that long journey to the milestone instead of fixating on the celebration. And if there's one thing I'd like you to take away from this video, besides don't electrocute yourself because you broke off the ground pin, it would be this. And ladies and gentlemen, there you have it, things you should never do on guitar. Remember, you can get my new course, Elevated Open Chords, 50% off. If you use promo code LAUNCH50 at checkout, you can find more information for that using the link in the description or head over to SamuraiGuitarTheory.com. We got Sammy G merch over at ShopSamuraiGuitars.com. Check out the pixelated guitar playing samurai, as well as a number of other designs and a bunch of different styles, sizes, and colors. Thank you all for watching. Until next time, look after yourselves, look after each other, look after the planet. I'm Samurai Guitarist, and I'll see you again soon.